This is Bishop Dale Broder. Thank you so much for joining our YouTube channel today. If this is a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it and then click the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Hit that little notification bell so that you never ever miss another one of our videos. And then if you're in the Metro Atlanta area on a Sunday, check out one of our exhilarating services at 8.30 a.m., 11 a.m., or 6 o'clock p.m. My text today comes from St. John chapter 16, verse 16 through 23. Notice these words of Jesus. In a little while, you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that, you will see me again. Some of the disciples ask each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I am going to the Father. And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized that they wanted to ask him about it, so he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. And when her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. I'm talking today simply from the subject, the gateway of destiny. The gateway of destiny. A gateway is a means of access or entry to a place, a gateway. It, it's the thing that is a portal between two positions, between two worlds, between what has been and what is to come. It is a gateway, it is a, a thoroughfare. Uh, it is this particular gateway where we stand today. It is a unique position where we have the capacity to be able to look back with reflection and sometimes regret, but look forward with expectations and sometimes anxiety because we don't fully know what the future holds. But when we are rooted in God, we know who holds the future. So when you stand in a gateway, you stand on the precipice of, of what is shifting in time. And so we look back with reflection to say, Lord, you've been good. Lord, I've gone through a lot, but you have sustained me. You've said, Lord, I almost died, but I'm still here. You look back with reflection as to what all you've gone through that you never thought that you would have had to deal with some of the things that you've dealt with, but you're still here anyhow, even after all that you've been through that should have taken you out and should have caused you to lose your mind. In reflection, you begin to count your many blessings one by one. And even though things uh, were bad, they could have been worse. So when you reflect, your heart can begin to fill with, with praise and thanksgiving to God when you have the right perspective. And yet some people in reflection, they get angry and they become resentful and then they're full of bitterness and, 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 and sourness because of, of what happened and they feel that life gave them the bad end of a, of, of a deal. It's, it's your, your outlook always determines your outcome. And that's why I said, you know, you have to be able to, to stand in the gateway with reflection and have the right perspective because your perspective is determined by, by where you sit and, and, uh, and, and what you see and what you hear. So when you're in a gateway, it's, it's a time of reflection. To say, what, what have I gained? What, what could I do better? What, what should I do more of? What should I cut out of my life completely? What should I do differently from this place? It's a time of reflection. It is the gateway to destiny. We're talking about the gateway to destiny. You ought to spend some time in this gateway in reflection. To say, Lord, what have I learned by where I have been? By the things that I've, I've done on my, my journey. Sometimes you learn wisdom by, by the mistakes that you've made. So it's, 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 it's in reflection saying, God, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna keep repeating these cycles. I don't wanna just keep repenting and repenting over the same old mess, God. I want you to show me the cause, what's causing me so that I don't keep tearing down the spider webs, I can kill the spider. It's, this is a new season now. We are in a new season. 
in the world, we're in a gateway of reflection, 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 sometimes with regret. But at the same time, all you have to do is shift your perspective, your perspective, right to the future, right to what is ahead. And you can live with an anticipation. You can live with a hope. You can live with a trust. And it all happens in the gateway. The gateway to destiny, the gateway to destiny, it is a time of both reflection and expectation. And it just depends on which direction you're going to look while you stand in the gateway. Am I going to look back with regret over what could have, should have, would have? Or will I look toward the future that I can't change my past? And I want to say this to you today. By the faith of the living God, you cannot alter your past, but you can always bring your past to the altar. And there are some things, there are some things that when God wants to really help you and to, to impact your life and to change you and to make you who you need, really need to be, we have to say, God, I, I can't alter the past, God, but I can bring my past to the altar. And what I couldn't fix, what I couldn't fix, your blood can cover. My God, I thank God for the blood. I thank God, I don't know about you, but I thank God for the blood. There's always a pain in leaving the familiar and then going into the unknown. That happens in the gateway. You deal with the pain of not knowing. We all experience various pains in life, various pains, emotional pain and psychological pain, physical pain, financial pain. We deal with relational pain. Life is filled with all kind of pain. You know, you can go through stuff, people can do stuff to you, emotional pain, psychological pain, the stuff that you've gone through, trauma that you've experienced, physical pain from surgery, from accidents, from injury, from falling, from sleeping in the wrong position. You can wake up out of joint. <laughs> from financial pain of making, uh, you know, bad decisions and trusting people that you shouldn't have trusted. Relational pain, people that break your heart that you never thought would ever do this to you. Life is filled with pain. You cannot escape it. And no pain is alike, but the good thing about it is that pain does still have purpose. God loves us, and he uses hurt and pain in this world ultimately to bring glory to him. He doesn't just cause it, but God will use it. Not everything bad that happens to you is God sent, but it is God used. God will use it if, if, if you'll trust him. And so... And the whole process that sometimes I've, I've helped people along the, the, the years that were going through terrible uh, periods of grieving. You can lose a child, you can lose a spouse, you can, you can lose something that was dear to you and, and you grieve whenever we lose. You, 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 there's, a, there's a grief process and it is normal. It's not a, a sign that you don't have faith. You lose something that you love, you grieve. You lose somebody that you love, you grieve. And you can be doing fine and all of a sudden, just one day out of the clear blue, you can just have a breakdown, a meltdown. And then immediately you think, I, I just had a setback. No, you didn't have a setback. That's a part of the process. It's a part of the process. It's not a setback. It's setting you up for the breakthrough. It, 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 it come, grief comes in waves. And you can be doing fine and just walking and singing and whistling one day. And all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, it hits you and you have a meltdown and you didn't even know what in the world happened and you think that it was a setback. It's not a setback. That's a part of your healing process. It's the water of life that's just flowing. It's a part of the process. It's a part of the process. And if you looked at it as a setback, your perspective can jack you up because you could feel like I was doing so well. You're still doing well. And let me just tell you this. It's a sign of health when you can still feel pain. You're in bad shape. You got a deep sickness when you're in pain and can't feel it. If you're paralyzed from the waist down and you can't feel when your leg is hurt. If you got an illness in your body and you can't feel it, it's a serious issue. When you, you've got pain and you can't feel it, when you've, it, it the, the pain is anesthetized through a deeper sickness. That's the real problem. You still have a large degree of health when you can sense pain it's a blessing to still be able to feel it and know that I've got it and that God is with me here's a key that I really want to give it to you this this is the whole deal in the nutshell that pain 
is the gatekeeper of destiny. Pain is the gatekeeper of destiny. Pain is inescapable. And you will either experience the pain of regret or you will experience the pain of discipline. You get to choose. And if I will discipline myself in this moment, I'll deal with the pain of discipline. Discipline is a pain, but regret is a deeper pain. You get to choose the kind of pain that you have. And a major reason that many people never ever reach their destiny in life is because they do not want to deal with pain. If you're going to deal, if you ever go into a place of success in your life, position yourself for pain. If you're going after something worth having in this life, position yourself for pain. If you're going to throw your heart out there to be loved by somebody, get ready for pain. It goes with the territory. I don't care whether it's a spouse, whether it's a child that you give birth to, position yourself for the pain. There's a word called indolent, indolent. The word indolent means lazy. But when you really understand the etymology of indolent, the word indolent literally means avoiding pain. And isn't it crazy that lazy folks call themselves avoiding pain and in, the, in your whole process of your being lazy, in avoiding pain, you actually create more pain for somebody else? Isn't that the trick? I mean, how ironic is that? That you're trying to avoid pain and you end up causing more pain by trying to avoid the pain because you don't want to deal with the issue that is at hand. And so now you create more pain on the backside of that, trying to avoid the pain. That's why there's a problem with indolence. The one who is avoiding pain because they don't, didn't want to deal with rejection. Because you didn't want to deal with that, now you're dealing with loneliness. Now you're dealing with brokenness. Now you're feeling uh, isolated. Now you're feeling the, the discouragement and you don't even have anybody who can encourage you and talk you out of your, your low mood. So when you avoid pain, you actually create more. Whenever you avoid what's aching in your body and you don't ever go to get it checked out, you at least need to know how to pray. You need to know what it is. So you say, Jesus, this is what they said, but this is what your word said. See, you need, you need to at least know what it is so that it, that becomes like a handle by which you can grab that thing and snatch it out. And deal with it so don't avoid the pain because if you avoid the pain you'll actually end up creating more pain I don't see pain as a terrible thing or as a negative thing here's my personal philosophy is that every adversity that comes into your life is a bridge carrying you to another place of victory every adversity that comes into your life is a bridge carrying you to another place of victory touch somebody tell them I'm on my way somewhere I'm on my way somewhere I'm on my way somewhere adversity pain it's a bridge carrying you to another place of victory if you go from being a weak pusillanimous person to becoming a person of strength you're gonna have to go through the the discomfort of, of discipline of getting up when you don't feel like getting up going when you don't feel like going studying when you don't feel like studying preparing when you don't feel like preparing and practicing when you don't feel like practicing you go through the adversity or the pain and the discomfort of that but it's a bridge carrying you to another place of victory it is that action that is the bridge that goes from dream to reality. You have to cross the bridge. Pain is the gateway. The only reason that a lot of people don't get the honey in life is because of the pain of the stinger that is in the bee that created it. And if you focus on the, on the stinger in the bee, it'll keep you away from the honey. But if you ever get hungry enough, I will risk my arm being stung to reach into the beehive and dip some honey off of the honeycomb. If you ever get hungry enough, I'm just here to remind you, I'm just here to remind you today, 
that when the pain, when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of changing, then I'll change. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, pain, it is the gateway of destiny. When you realize that, listen, I was built for more than this, that life has got to be more than this. I'm here for more than this just to manage problems. I'm here for more than this. Life is more than this. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place today. But triumph is on the other side of a struggle. It is, and I'm convinced that we often give birth to new areas of destiny by going through the corridor of pain. It absolutely blows me away at the magnificence of the melodies, the songs that God writes through Kirk Carr. But he's paid a price. You come out of darkness. Your best music comes. Songs of the night. Through some of your greatest pain and when you can't see what God is doing and God, how am I going to make it now? What's, what's this about? It is, it's, it's during the time that when other people are cursing because of the darkness to be able to pss, light a candle in the midst of it and say, God, I will praise you anyway. That though you slay me yet, yet will I, I trust him. And sometimes... You'll have to learn that learning is a gift even when pain is the teacher. That however I have to learn this, God, I trust you. I trust you. And the very experiences that we often experience that are so painful are the ones that end up shifting our destiny. The things that cost you the most are the things that pay you the most. Where there's such great risk involved there's such great return. There's such great reward. When the risk is great, my God, the reward is commensurate to the risk, but there's a pain that I could lose everything I've got right here. I could lose everything. But if you lose everything that you've got and gain everything that he has, my God, it is worth it. It is worth it. They're the painful things that shape you, that shift destiny for you. If you notice Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 18, Jeremiah's a prophet and he's, he's just going through. You think that just because you administer that you're exempt from pain? You better think again. Here's Jeremiah the prophet that's saying, why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable which refuses to be healed? He said, Lord, I, I've got, I'm dealing with something here. Lord, I've asked you about this. Why, why have you not dealt with this and taken it away? It's an easy thing for you. Why, God, is my pain perpetual? Why are you leaving something in my life that is an irritant? Now, if the prophet had to deal with that, who do you think you are? I just came to shift your perspective to help you to understand God is not your enemy. And the pain does not mean that he hates you. Maybe he's trying to birth something through you that'll bring you joy. It doesn't look like joy in the beginning. And have you ever been to that place to where you wondered why the road that you were on was so hard? In the struggle of your journey, the elements are there to build strength in you, to help you to become who you're destined to be. Why else would a caterpillar be encapsulated in a cocoon and then have to fight its way out but it is after it has created the environment by what came out of its mouth. And that's why what we did here today, by what came out of our mouth, praise and worship, creates an atmosphere of praise and glory. And glory is the atmosphere for miracles. And the caterpillar out of its mouth creates the cocoon that encapsulates it. But then it has to break out of the very cocoon that it created with its own mouth. And it is through pushing and stretching and pressing 
that breaks it out that is actually strengthening the capillaries and the veins in the wings of the butterfly. And if it did not go through the struggle to get out, it wouldn't have the strength to fly. God knows what he's doing. It's the pain of just trying to get free to where you can flap your wings that are building the strength for your wings to even be able to fly. The pain and the discomfort of a pruning when God's trying to make you better. There's a pruning that God takes you through and it's not to hurt you. It's not to set you back. It's actually to make you more productive. Notice St. John 15 verse 1 and 2. Jesus said, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit. You wonder, Lord, why am I doing this? And then it's getting worse for me. Every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. He prunes every branch that produces fruit. Why? So that it will produce more more fruit. He cuts you back not to reduce you but to make you more productive. And it is the pruning. It's the storms. They are the sorrows that reveal to us what kind of condition that we're in. You know that we are the trees of the Lord designed to lift our hands in praise and glory to him. And trees that are in good conditions don't topple in a storm. They are the trees that have been compromised. And they've got death. We had a, an, an issue with a tree in our yard and, and, and an arborist came and we had him to take a look at it and, and he began to point out things that I never knew. He said, you see these ants here, they going up and down. He says, a sign that there's death in the tree. And then he showed us, he says, take a look at some of these mushrooms that are around here that are growing here. He says, it means that the tree is dead. I said, but there's blooming here. Isn't it amazing how you can be producing signs of life and yet have death? Still circulating and, and, the man, and an arborist had to, to let me know that though there was greenery on the tree and leaves on the tree, but death was in the trunk. And how, how is it? This, this, this incredible dichotomy that we can see this, this thing that creates a conundrum in our own minds that I'm alive but I've got death working in me at the same time. And yet God still is able to move in the midst of all of that and it's those trees that have eroded root systems that when the storm comes they are the ones that don't survive. They're the ones that, that topple over and and little did we know how unhealthy that a lot of us as trees were until something like a pandemic hits. And so many are wiped out. It, it's, it was a sign of the condition of the trees. That they looked fine. That we, you never knew by looking at their leaves what death was breathing in them. And that's why you have to be thankful to God because just because you're blooming does not mean you're not dying. But we have to trust him. We have to trust him. And so the response in the storm, it reveals the kind of foundation really upon which we are built. Isaiah chapter 43, notice verse 2. He's letting us know in the world you're going to have some trouble and we're going to get hurt. He says that when you, when you go, when you go through the, the deep waters, not if, when you go through deep waters. He says, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up and the flames will not consume you. When, 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 not if, when you go. So don't think it's strange. He's already telling you, listen, water is going to come. You, you, you're going to go through rivers. You're going to deal with fire. You're going to get in some hot situation. Not a if, a when, when the fire of oppression, it will, you will not be burned up. If you keep your eyes on him, the flames will not consume you. It should have destroyed you, but you'll be able to be kept and you won't even understand why you're being kept. This is a prophetic promise of God. Problems are normal to life and he's letting us know you're going to deal with problems and you're going to deal with pain. They're normal to life. I love this statement by Brianna West. Weist. She said that sometimes you get what you want and other times you get a lesson in patience, empathy, compassion, faith, clarity, resilience, humility, and life. And she says, either way, you win. Sometimes you get what you want. Other times you get a lesson in patience, empathy, compassion, 
faith, clarity, resilience, humility, and life. But either way, you win. You win some and you learn some. You never lose unless you fail to learn. Notice what 1 Peter reminds us about. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. Dear friends, dear friends, brothers and sisters, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you're going through as if some strange thing were happening. Instead, be very glad. For these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. He says they, 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 they don't see all the pain that you go through, but when God brings you out of this, he's going to reveal his glory. I'm here to remind you today that pain is the gateway to destiny. Pain is the gateway to destiny. Are you willing to pay the price? Can you stand to be blessed? Because here's the truth, victory is always on the other side of a battle. Your victory, whatever it is that you're standing for, it is always on the other side of a battle. You're getting your degree from school is on the other side of a battle. You're being able to get the promotion on the job is on the other side of a battle. You're being able to, to persevere in your marriage is on the other side of a battle. What is it that you need to continue fighting through? What is it that you need to continue fighting through if you realize that my victory is on the other side of a battle. The promised land, guess, guess what was in front of it? A Red Sea. Do you understand that this Red Sea was a type of the blood of Jesus? That there's something demonic keeping you out of your promised land and you're not gonna be able to get to your promised land just with positive thinking and affirmation. You need the power of the blood. There's some things that have to die the demonic things that are chasing you, they don't die until they get into the Red Sea. It is a spiritual type of the blood of Jesus over generational things that have been chasing you. And we are getting ready to cross over into something that is brand new in another dimension of our destiny. And we need everything that has been attacking our minds, our bodies, our finances, our faith, our family, our fitness. We need it to be touched by the power of the blood. There is still wonder-working power in the blood. The anonymous person said these words that I am thankful for my struggle because without it, I wouldn't have stumbled across my strength. I don't know about you, but I am thankful for my struggle because without it, I would not have stumbled across my strength. If you never did the weights, you'd never develop the strength. And until you learn how to thank God even for the pain, because he knows what he's doing. Isaiah prophetically declared something that is an anomaly that the deserts would become green and that the Lord would display his glory and his splendor he declared that in Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 2. But here in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3 and 4, notice here, he's saying, give strength to hands that are tired and to knees that tremble with weakness. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue. God is coming to your rescue. God is coming to your rescue. Coming to punish your enemies. I, I, I don't know who this is for, but tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong, do not be afraid. God is coming, he's coming to your rescue, coming to punish your enemies. And although we experience problems in this world, here is God's promise to us. He gives us a promise, even though you you will deal with pain. Pain is the gateway to destiny. 
You got to pay a price. Not everybody wants to pay that price of going into business, of stepping out in faith and actualizing your dream, of dealing with cantankerous people. It's a price, it's a price. There's a price to pay whenever you're going to be a leader. It's a price to pay whenever you're going to be a head of household. There's a price to pay whenever you're going to be a husband. There's a price to pay whenever you're going to be a father and a mother. There's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And you get hurt by people. But here's a word of the Lord. Psalm chapter 147 and verse 3. He heals the broken heart and bandages their wounds. He heals the broken heart and bandages, bandages their wounds. To leave from where you are, you have to decide where you would rather be. Everybody wants an easy way. That's a price to pay. The gateway of destiny is pain. It's uncomfortable. But when you go through it and pay that price, you'll say like Maya Angelou, that I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Lord, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. And the very things that came that you thought they were going to kill you was working for your good, building your strength. Day by day, moment by moment. If your destiny is going to be shifted, if you're gonna shift your, your physique, pain. I mean, when you leave out some days, it's, I had a new trainer that I had to release because after leg day one day and I could barely, But if you stand, you realize that something is being broken down while something else is being built up. And we're right at the gateway of destiny. And in that gateway, there's, there's Egypt that we could always go back to. But there's a promised land of something that's bigger and better He's given us a New Testament, a better covenant, established upon better promises. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that we don't have to go out and get bulls and sheep and turtle doves and make sacrifices and a blood slaughter. Jesus, who became that one sacrificial, substitutionary, mediatorial sacrifice for us on the cross, made himself of no reputation, took our sins on him and died for us, changed places with us. I really want you to understand what Jesus did. Jesus came to the crime scene. Your fingerprints were all over the, the scene of the crime. And, 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 and all that Jesus did, he, he came to the seen and cleared all of your fingerprints off and put his there to incriminate himself. He changed place with you. He changed place with you. And I just want to encourage you that every person who doesn't know Jesus, if you've been in your Egypt and you realize there's a promised land waiting for me, and it's painful for me to leave the stuff that has brought me pleasure. But I realize it's time now. And every time I feel good, I'm making God feel bad. Every time that I'm doing something that is sensual, that feels good to me, I'm, I'm grieving the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, Lord, I'm sorry for hurting you. My pain hurts you. And I don't want you to be in pain in vain. Don't let his pain be in vain. 
But it's time for you to get out of your pain now by making a painful decision to leave from where you've been. I know some of you have done some dirty, low-down things that you don't even have to tell anybody. I'm not asking you to tell me. You don't have to tell me. What I'm telling you today is that the very altar, that the very past that you couldn't alter, now bring that past to the altar. We hope that you enjoyed that message. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then press the notification bell so that you don't miss another one of our videos. And if you want to partner with us, click the Give Now button. Thank you for what you do.